Welcome to Duval Daily presented by GinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Thursday, November 7th. It's pretty big news. A little bit of a bombshell from Rap Sheet a couple hours ago. Ian Rappaport over NFL Network, NFL Media. Um, Trevor Lawrence, according to Rap Sheet, unlikely to play against the Minnesota Vikings this weekend. The Jags are 2-7, and seven, obviously. Vikings coming in at 6-2. and two. There's a lot to unpack here. A lot to unpack here. From his tweet, from the ramifications of everything going on with inside that building, uh, let's just dive into it. Really appreciate y'all being here. So here's exactly what Ian Rappaport said. I'll put it here up, up on the screen for y'all. As Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence left shoulder, that's the injury he's dealing with, continues to get treatment and weigh options for the future, sources say he's considered unlikely to play Sunday versus the Vikings. Lawrence was limited in practice yesterday, and Coach Doug Peterson was noncommittal about his status. So we just spoke to Press Taylor right after this came out, and Press Taylor said that Trevor Lawrence is doing everything in his power to play and that he's day-to-day. That certainly doesn't sound like a team that feels like their quarterback is unlikely to play. I mean, it's Thursday. You've got two days, you know, almost three days until you kick off against the Vikings. That's different stories being told here. Certainly different stories being told. The Jaguars are saying one thing. Rap sheet. Whoever's telling him this, saying another. I don't know what to make of it, honestly, but I will say this. More and more over the last month, month and a half, two months, you continue to have situations where somebody on the Jaguars is saying one thing and someone else is saying another, and those two things completely contradict. It's happening consistently, right? Um, you know, you got word from Jordan Schultz a while back that there's players in the locker room out on Doug Peterson. And then Doug Peterson refutes that, right? Um, of course he's going to, but so you had that. And then you have the back and forth between Eric Armstead saying that, you know, the Jaguars wanted him to play in and the Jaguars are saying that he wanted to play in, you know, edge. So that doesn't make sense. And then you've got this situation, and then you've got the whole rock, paper, scissors deal as well, where Josh Hines Allen and Trayvon Walker were saying they rock, paper, scissors it to see who was going in, you know, the, the drive where Trayvon Walker scored that touchdown. And then Ryan Nielsen comes out and says that's not true. Uh, what the heck is going on? And obviously the Mason Smith situation makes no sense. Uh, it, it's There's discord. There's no question about that. There is discord within that building. Different stories consistently being told. That's the one constant. Different stories being told. How about this? On Monday, Doug Peterson asked about Brian Thomas Jr. Said they clouded him. They basically doubled him. And they weren't prepared for that based on their tape. Press Taylor said, the exact opposite today when I asked him about Brian Thomas Jr. <laughs> what is going on inside that building? He said that's what they expected. There's things they could have done, times they could have you know, found him, and they didn't. What? 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 <laughs> like, does no one care? Like, it's one thing if you're going to lie to us, lie to the media, lie to everyone. Get your story straight. Does not make sense. So getting back to this specific thing, the Trevor Lawrence situation, obviously the Jaguars did bring in C.J. Beathard, which means they want insurance. They're not convinced, I guess, that Trevor Lawrence would definitely play. They're obviously not saying publicly that they don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to play, but bringing in C.J. Beathard means you want that insurance. The really interesting part about what Rap Sheet said in his tweet is that they are, or that Trevor Lawrence is weighing options for the future. 
What does that mean? What does that mean? I don't have any inside knowledge on this situation, but does that mean Trevor Lawrence is like weighing? Should he have surgery right now or should he have surgery later on the shoulder? Um, There's so many different things that that could mean. Weighing options for the future. I'll tell you a couple things I don't think it means. I don't think it means Trevor Lawrence not wanting to be in Jacksonville. I don't. I think Trevor Lawrence signed the contract here. He wants to be here. He's under contract through forever. I think he loves it in Jacksonville. Um, this is a guy who has given everything physically to get out there and play football games for the Jaguars over the last several years. I mean, countless injuries he battled through last year. And he battled through injury the year before that, too. He's battling through it now. I mean, he got injured in the first half against the the Eagles, came out and and played, and played fairly well. Yes, the interception happened at the end of the game. I think that that interception was not a good throw by Trevor Lawrence, but I also think it was a horrible, horrible play call in the moment. Uh, I also think the Jaguars shouldn't have even been throwing the ball at that time. If, if Dearness Johnson comes down with that football, the Jaguars lose that football game because they have too much time on the clock for the Philadelphia Eagles to go down and get a field goal. But yeah, you know, Trevor Lawrence has shown his willingness to give absolutely everything that he has to play through injury. So I don't think it means he doesn't want to be in Jacksonville. I don't think it means he doesn't want to play this week. I honestly don't know what to think. We're going to continue talking about it, though. Uh, You know, who told Ian Rappaport that from within the building? Talk about what Pete Prisco had to say about it as well. Um, It's a fascinating topic. But first, y'all got to check out Underdog for best ball a whole lot more. You can use code Duval Daily, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on their easy to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. This season, Underdog is going to be running specials, promos, bonuses almost every single day, like their profit boosts. Pump up your winnings in just a tap when you apply the boost to eligible entries. There are tons of options for Jaguars and Vikings to look at, pick ems. You want to pick a running back like Tank Bigsby to score a touchdown? Underdog has vulture protection to rescue your pick'em if your running back gets vultured. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Duval Daily to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona 1-800-NEXT-STEP. That's 1-800-639-8783. Or text next step to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 Hope line at one 878 hope and why or text hope and why 467 369 shout out to underdog fantasy if you support them you are supporting us it's a fun fun place to play no doubt about it so another interesting layer as i mentioned who in the building told ian rapaport what he reported that trevor lawrence is weighing options for the future and is considered unlikely to play sunday versus the vikings Or maybe it was Trevor Lawrence's camp. I don't know. But it feels like there's games being played here. To me. That's just my speculation. That's my read on the situation. Sources say he's considered unlikely to play and he's weighing options for the future. I don't think it was Doug Peterson. I don't know. Who benefits from that? don't know I really don't now love Pete Prisco stirring up the pot one of the best best in the business in my opinion he's awesome he says the smartest thing that Trevor Lawrence can do is shut it down and wait for Ben Johnson the offense and staff has impacted that kid in a big way so the second part of that, I absolutely agree with. The, this, this offense is 
in a lot of ways, archaic, unprepared, poorly coached. The defense, same exact thing. Um, it's not good. It has negatively impacted him. And at times it makes him look bad. When even with all the, you know, poor receiver play, poor coaching, offensive line's been all over the dang place since he's been here. Even with all that, right now he's still playing like a borderline top 10 quarterback. Whether you want to talk about the eye test, EPA, adjusted EPA, PFF grades, no matter what metric you're looking at, Trevor Lawrence is playing good football despite having not a lot of help around him. And the goal for Trevor Lawrence is not to be a top-ten quarterback. The goal for him is to be a Super Bowl-caliber quarterback that's operating at a higher level than he is operating at right now. Bottom line. Let's make that very clear. Prisco says the smartest thing Lawrence can do is shut it down and wait for Ben Johnson. Um, I mean, I'm also saying yes to Ben Johnson. Sure. Detroit Lions offensive coordinator, play caller, the offense is his. He he runs that thing. Um, so yeah, Ben Johnson here for that. I think there's a lot of young guys offensively that could could really help Trevor Lawrence out. I think Ben Johnson's one of them. But saying the smartest thing Lawrence can do is shut it down. Um, that on one hand I agree. Like what? What does he have to gain from going out there and continuing to play for a coach who seemingly, well, let's just say a coach that's not getting the job done in Doug Peterson. Let's just say that. And Press Taylor as well. A defense that can't stop anything, right? Why risk injury the rest of this year? I get that. And I I also think, you know, I don't think he's at a point where every snap he takes under this coaching staff and regime is like negatively impacting his future. Because I think he's so good that he can battle through it. But, and, you know, mentally strong. But, it's not like growing, trying to grow within this offense. It's just not happening at this point. It's stagnated. It's, it's, it's not going to benefit Trevor Lawrence's future. It's not going to benefit 2025 Trevor Lawrence and his individual game to continue playing for this offense. I, I completely agree with that. But what does that do to the locker room? You have guys like Brandon Sheriff, you know, playing with a sprained MCL Guys across the board playing through injury. And, you know, Trevor Lawrence has been one of those guys for a long time. The difference now is, I mean, two and seven head coach looks like, you know, probably not long for the job. Vikings coming in here. They can't believe they're only four point favorites. They should be heavy favorites. And then the Lions at Detroit next week, you're going to be facing two and nine unless you somehow pull it out of your butt this weekend. Um, I don't know. What a mess. What a mess. The ride is almost over, though. It is. I really do believe that. One way or the other, I think that what you've been seeing is the people you've been seeing probably in for a change. Whether that's at the bye week, after that, I don't know. But there is too much, too much, obviously losing, but too much misinformation. One guy saying this, another guy saying that, constantly. Yeah, that's the sign of of things need to change, and I think that they will. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Hopefully Trevor Lawrence gets healthy. Hopefully he leads the Jaguars to a win. 
against the Vikings. We'll see how it plays out. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Really appreciate y'all. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear, become a channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.